So we're going to celebrate Independence Day in a couple days. I thought it was kind of interesting that actually today was supposed to be the day. I don't know. There's some interesting history about this. Um, What was it? Samuel Adams, I believe, wrote his wife and said, I... Uh, tomorrow is going to be, he, he wrote on July 1st, that tomorrow is going to be uh, a day to be remembered in history that will be celebrated for years to come. Uh, but they couldn't agree on it on the 2nd, so they ended up voting on it on the 4th. And some people believe it actually wasn't signed until August sometime. But anyway, it's kind of interesting. One other thing I thought was... was uh, um, Let me see here. This is interesting. So a remarkable coincidence was uh, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, uh, the only signatories of the Declaration of Independence, later to serve as presidents of the United States, both died on the same day, July 4th, 1826. Isn't that interesting? Which was the 50th anniversary of the Declaration. Isn't that interesting? (laughs) Although not a signatory of the Declaration of Independence, James Monroe, another founding father, was elected president, also died on July 4th, 1831, making him the third president who died on the anniversary of the independence. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, Independence is so important. And you know, there's some factors that go into it that I just want to refer to today quickly. Because... um, Lives have to be sacrificed, blood has to be shed to secure what's going to take place in a declaration. It wasn't enough for them to just win win battles. They had to finally say, okay, this is what we're not going to go back to anymore. They they were oppressed, weren't they? They were were unrighteously oppressed by England and and they... and the reason why England could do that, why, why could England do that? It's because they were the ones with the, with the guns, right? <laughs> and so because they were the ones with the guns, they, they could say, okay, now you have to do this. And to resist the oppression, that was, they had plenty of reasons to do it already, but it wasn't until they took up arms and made a declaration that they could be free from the oppression, that they could say that they were independent. I was thinking about it this way. you know. <laughs> so, so many times, you know, we can say, well, I'm just independent. I don't need anybody else. But you know, no, we're all dependent on something. Yeah, yeah. And much of it has to do with when we decide to do something different, we're going to depend on something else now. A couple of quick little stories that I, th- I thought kind of relate to this. So there was this little boy across the alley from me when I was a little boy. Uh, and this this was before I was seven, so I was pretty young. And this boy was kind of a bully, and so he would he would kind of beat up on me some. And my dad actually told me this. Believe it or not, my dad actually told me, next time he starts beating up on you, wind up and hit him right in the nose. <laughs> my dad told me that. Yeah. And you know what was going on? I was submitting to all this dominance until I came up with my own weapon. <laughs> and now I depended on this. <laughs> and I was no longer, and I, was, I became independent from his oppression <laughs> when I became dependent on this. And I got to experience that when I was less than seven. But when I was seven, my little brother came along. <laughs> and I loved to tease my little brother. He, he was... Get him, take him down and tickle him. And I don't know if he heard that story or what, but I did that until he found his fist. And he gained independence from me. It was kind of, I mean, he's, he's seven years younger than me. I mean, we're not going to fight. I mean, there's, there might still not be a fight. I'll just say that because he's not here, but, uh, right? I could take him. I could take him. But we never fought in that regard. But, but he was definitely being oppressed by me until he found some independence, right? Yeah. So um, let's, let's, let's go here. I, I've got a statement here that I thought, man, um, 
Find out where I'm at in here real quick. I'm, I'm skipping some stuff here, all right? Um, so the first statement I, I want to make is independence from harm requires dependence on arms. You're going to have to have something that's greater than what's coming against you, and you're going to need to be able to use it if you're going to get independence from it. <laughs> and then you're going to have to be willing to use it some more just to maintain that independence. That's kind of what we're going through right now in our country. It's not enough that it's been won for us. We're going to have to maintain it. We're going to have to, we have to keep taking up arms. But it's not just military arms. It's ideology. What was actually taking place was, was the thought that the king could dominate them. And they said, no, we have another thing that given to us by our creator is a, is a freedom. And that we're going to stand up for that now, yeah. right? So this is the crux of what I want to get to today is that in order for us to be independent from harm, we're going to have to take up and use arms, mm -hmm. weapons. So we got started on this a little bit last week. You got to have some weapons, don't you? Yeah. You got to be willing to use them. Father, help us this morning. We need you. God, you said that you would be strong in us, that you would equip us, that you would enable us. And God, I pray that today that there would be an enabling of us by the power of your spirit to use what you've already given us to be independent from what anything that scoundrel of Satan would try to do in our lives. And Father, I thank you that you've given us this power and that you're enabling us to wield it well. Thank you for it, Father, today. In Jesus' name, amen. So... Few more statements. There's a, a declaration then becomes the greatest weapon of freedom. You know, we talked about that a little bit last week. It's not enough to just have a whole bunch of arms. You have to have a reason for it. You're going for something. What enabled them to make this declaration that was not just for them? You know, some interesting things is there was like 13 people that lost their homes. People put up a whole bunch of money to fund the, the government that never got their money back. There, there, was, there, was a, there was an investment made that, and many of those people that signed went on to become legislators. And it wasn't about just that moment. It was about what their words would carry them to further. And it's what we get to experience today was something that they set themselves apart for on that day, right? Yeah. But what the, the most powerful thing, though, that sets us apart is not our weapons. It's... Uh, it's a declaration that we make. Yeah, that's, that's what really got them in trouble. That's what really set the, changed history. It was not, I mean, there's just, there's people fighting all the time. But man, you come up with a declaration that, that is saying what you're up to. And now things change, right? So, and you're either going to be dominated or liberated by weapons. Can you see this? Either you're going to be underneath somebody's weaponry. It's like England. The reason why they were able to oppress us is because we were underneath their weaponry. And it wasn't until they became underneath ours. If you, if you can stay with me on this, this is very critical. Because there's lies coming at us all the time. that Either we get under that, we allow it to do. Until we get to the point where we say no. No. I'm making a declaration. No more will you do that to me. Right? So either you're going to be dominated or you're going to be liberated by weapons. Okay? Either you're going to be a slave of words or master with them. Either you're going to be, it's very similar to the previous statement, the words become the weapons. And either you're going to be a slave to them or you're going to be a master over them, okay, with them. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's look at this first one, John 8, 36. Freedom in heritage change, okay? So what we got in Christ, <laughs> what we have as a nation today is built upon blood that was shed for us, right? Mm -hmm. And people are pouring across our borders now, unrightfully, I believe, to possess something that they have no heritage in. They don't have no stake in it. And so they're, they're reaping the benefits of something that they don't understand how it was won 
or how much, how, how much it cost, right? And that's why there's a disheveling of the foundation of our nation because there's, there hasn't been a commitment or there's becoming a, a lessening of a commitment to who we are and the, and the price that was paid for us to get to this place of independence, Right? But very similarly for us, in Christ, we've been given. So Americans, people, and, and it doesn't matter where you're from, you can become an American. We have people here today that have done that. You've gone through that process. You've become a citizen. But when you become a citizen, now you're, you have forefathers. Now you have an identity here as an American that separates you from where you've been somewhat. You still have family. You still have, you know... <laughs> The Akatapoys just went and visited their family, but they came back what? Where they have a heritage here, right? Very similarly for us. Jesus came and paid a price for us so that we can have another father now. We can have another heritage now that sets us apart from the bondage that, that was before. We're no longer like America underneath, uh, underneath England's rule underneath their weapons no we we've been given other weapons to cause us to be able to be independent from what the enemy would do to us right so john 8 36 so if the son liberates you makes you free men then you are really and unquestionably free Man, this is this is a necessity to, to get this revelation of this. Because even as Christians, we can feel like we're trying to get free. Yeah. We're trying to get something that we don't have yet. We already have this. It's already been won for us. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. When Jesus is talking about this, if you look at the context of this, he's talking about being a son. Mm-hmm. He said, before you were slaves, but, but now you're a son. And if the son makes you free, yeah. if being a son of the almighty God makes you free, that means you're free completely. Yes. That means you're independent yes. from any slavery, anything that the enemy could come against you with. Yes. You're free from that, yes. right? <laughs> All right. Let's look at Galatians 5.1. We're liberated in Christ and independent in our testimony. So how does that happen though? It's just like in America today, if we don't have a willingness to use our weapons, we're going to be underneath somebody else's weapons. And in fact, what's killing our country today is not military weapons, it's weapons of ideology. I mean, I mean, mindless ideology that requires faith to believe it because there's no evidence. There's no any other evidence. Right? It requires faith. So it, it's, it's a religion, and it's become our state religion. Don't talk to me about separation of church and state. It's become our state religion, right? And so what's happening is when a nation that is founded on righteousness, on God, cannot be beaten militarily, It will be beaten ideologically. It will go, you have to go to the hearts. And that's what's happening to our nation right now. But that's what happens to us as Christians. Satan can't defeat us based upon facts. So he comes to us based upon what we think. He comes to us based upon a lie. What does it look like? You, You aren't free. Look at you. You're bound. How many are are oppressed by something? Well, I don't want any show of hands right now. Amen. Right? Yes. How many are addicted by it? Yeah. Now, you might be going through something, yeah. but the lie is that that's you. Right. Yes. Right. The, the lie is that, that the only way that enemy has something to, to get you with if his weapons are bigger than yours. If he can beat you with the lie that you're oppressed, that you have an identity of a slave to sin, you'll keep being a slave to sin. But if you only know what your weapons are, but you have to use them. You have to utilize those things, right? 
And the only way you get independence from something is to make it dependent on you with the same weapons it's trying to use against you. This is, this is what our country needs right now. It needs truth. It needs people that love, that aren't condemning people that are ensconced in ignorance. You know, we, we don't need to hate people. We need to love them, need to understand what they're going through, right? But for us, what do we need to do? We need to be free ourselves. We need to not allow what's coming against us to become our identity. Galatians 5.1. Let me be clear. The anointed one has set us free. This sounds very similar to the previous one, right? Not partially, but completely and wonderfully free. We must always cherish this truth and stubbornly refuse to go back into the bondage of our post. It doesn't do any good to just have a stubborn attitude if you don't have something in your hand to be stubborn with. Right? You're going to at least need to have a fist that you can punch them in the nose with. Right? We are loaded. We are the ones that should be independent completely from that. But you only gain independence when your dependence is placed elsewhere. Amen? Loss of bondage requires reliance. So so if you're going to get free, you're going to have to become dependent on something else. This is what happened to our forefathers. They said, we're no longer going to be dependent on America. We're going to be dependent on this declaration and a unity that we come together to defend. They didn't become independent completely. No, they became dependent on each other. It was a United States. Right? Yeah, that's good. So loss of bondage requires new reliance. So I, I want to encourage in this, us in this. We have something that we, the more we become dependent on a new thing, a new freedom, the more we become, have an attitude about it. Don't you like that previous one we were saying? <laughs> Stubbornly refuse. How many want, like to be stubborn? Man, I, it's it's in me. I I can be very stubborn. And no, not you. Oh, oh okay. She's over here. Amen. So I was expecting it from my wife, and it came from another another voice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but there, but. But you have stubbornness when you believe in, in, in who you are. You, you have stubbornness when you feel like you're being challenged from, from being who you are. And there needs to be this understanding that Satan is not going to take who I am. Yes. Amen? Yes. And I'm going to get out. <laughs> okay, I'll get ahead of myself here. Because uh, we can talk about some weapons. I, I think we're probably... Uh, Set today for security, I imagine. <laughs> I won't say any more about that, all right. <clears throat> but loss of bondage requires new reliance. Romans 6, 22. But now, having been set free from sin, okay, we've been set free. We've already been given a new heritage. We already have a different father now, right? Yeah. But having been set from thee and having become slaves of God, oh, so we're not slaves of nobody. Right. No, we're slaves of God now. But it's a good thing. He's a good slave master. He's somebody who's going to take care of us, right? Yes. You have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. We have something that's positive in what we're serving now. Yes. Amen? But it's, there, there has to be a complete turn and reliance upon what we have now. We're not going to leave our gun at the house. We're going to take it with us. Amen? It's going to be... <laughs> we need to have Angela teach on this a little bit. Man, she's gone through all kinds of this training. It's scary kind of training. It's like, man, I want her to go with me if we're, if we're going on a mission trip or something. It's like, well, that's going to be very important. You got to have the right folks with you, don't you? And that's why you need to be in the right place also. Where we're in this together. We don't have people 
tearing us down. <laughs> Amen? Because you can't have one, you can't be on both sides of things at the same time. You can't be joined up with the accuser of the brethren, the ones that, that's volleying lies at people and expect to be on the side of God. <laughs> right? All right. John 8, 31. What dependence produces independence? So we're saying you're going to have to depend on something else, right? But what dependence does that? John 8, 31. Then Jesus said to them, Jews, who, uh, to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, okay, no, please don't let this become something that we just kind of put back into the category of something we've already heard. Right. Let's say, God, how, show me how to take what I already have and begin to become very independent with it, right? Yeah. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, independent, right? Independent from what? Well, not from him, from the lies, from the oppression, from England, <laughs> right? We get delivered from that by becoming dependent on something else. What is it? It's his words, okay? That means his words are the declaration that will eliminate the oppression of the enemy, amen? So directions are applied, the directions applied lead to dominance denied. Don't you like that phrase? That's quite a turning of a phrase, is it not? All right. Directions applied lead to dominance denied. I really like this, this psalm here. Psalm 119, 133. Man, Psalm 119 is just like full of stuff about God's words, isn't it? You know, I got, can I just confess something to you? <laughs> that I saw afresh and anew this week is, you know, the law wasn't all bad. Sometimes we want to get rid of the whole law. And Jesus said, I, I actually came to fulfill the law. <laughs> and I'm thinking, why did David take a whole, the largest chapter in the whole Bible by far to magnify God's law? It's because he's not thinking about the stuff that he's, that, that's, that's an oppression to him. He's thinking about the promises. Did you know all the promises of God are in the law? <laughs> and in Christ, they're yes and amen. That means there's a whole bunch of good things. Yes. There's a whole bunch of things from the, from the word that David stood upon to be a weapon against those who would come up against him. He said, let the enemies come on my left and on my right. And one thing I'm going to think about, Why? Because that was his weapon that would defeat any enemy that would come against him. One thing, I, one thing I desire is to be in the presence of God in the temple and to listen to what he has to say. Because what he has to say is my deliverance. <laughs> it's the weapon. The, when, we, when the enemy's coming at us, the first thing we want to do is despair and say, look at how bad the look at how bad my attack. As soon as we do that, his weapons are in our mouth. Yes. And they're defeating us right. more than he can physically. Right. And God says, I have something else. If you'll just listen to David a little bit. <laughs> yes. He's got the enemy coming on every side. And what does he do? He says, I just want to get God's words. Why? Because they are the weapon. What did Jesus say? If, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, right? You'll ask what you will and it shall be. That sounds pretty. Yeah. What do you want? Well, I want to be free. Well, you're free. Yeah. But you're going to have to use these words in specific ways that we'll get to here real quick, okay? Man, this is so good. We need to be free, don't we? Yeah. How are we going to affect a bound world if we're bound? And it doesn't matter if we're church, in church. It doesn't matter if, we're, if, if Jesus has already paid the price. If we're still under the lie. If we're still not using our weapon. Okay? Yeah. 2 Timothy 1.13. Our freedom then is not on God. So much, so much of the time we just want to put it all on God. Say, God's made me free while we're walking through misery. You know? So our, our freedom then is not some, God's already done his part, and now it's our responsibility. If we're going to walk in freedom, 
And, and here's what I want to encourage us in. I'm so glad that, that all, the, all the founders, Thomas Jefferson, you know, that they spent all that time writing that and then, then making sure that it went into place and following it up. It wasn't just for them. This is, this is man, revelation that we need to get that me taking my responsibility and utilizing the weapons I've been given to become free from the power of the enemy over my life, what it does is way beyond me. Somebody else's freedom is dependent upon me becoming independent. Amen? We just want to navel gaze all the time. We want, it's all about me. It's all about me. And, and God's saying, you know, I want you to be free so somebody else can be. Yes. Amen? Okay, 2 Timothy 1.13. Hold fast. How do you hold fast? It means you're not gonna let go of this, right? Sounds like you got some attitude. You're a little bit stubborn. The pattern of what? Sound words. Which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. We get the Holy Spirit when we receive from the receive Jesus, don't we? We get him. He comes to abide in us. He comes to guide us, right? How does he guide us? Just like David said, he guides me with his words. He takes me to good places. Amen? But those words become my weapons also. Because the enemy's going to want to come and he's going to want to guide us elsewhere in our thoughts, in our identity. And we will be dependent upon him until we develop an independence by being dependent on what we've been given on Christ. Oh, you could probably do a whole series about actually becoming really dependent on the word of God. You know, this is what happens with people when they, they, they develop a, an addiction. They're so dependent on it, they can't function without it, right? That's how we should be with the word of God. We're so dependent on it that we cannot function without it, right? Because our functioning is not like it was before. We're new. Romans 10, 8. So within reach, so this is the part I, I really like. How many, you don't have to say you're doing this now, but how many like to have your weapon close by? You know, you don't need it until you do. And when you do, it better be there. Right? Man, I got some people agreeing here today. This is kind of cool. But the weapons, the weapons we have to become independent from anything the enemy has against us, they are near to us all the time. But it doesn't do any good to have them near unless you actually take them out and use them. Yeah. You know, that you, you, you be in the supermarket, somebody starts shooting everybody up, and, and you, you, you could be packing, and it doesn't do any good. You're not going to save anybody else unless you pull out and start firing away yourself. Is that a bad... <laughs> what did I say this time? I probably said something this time. Huh? Well, these things happen. They happen. I mean, in church, they happen, right? Actually, there, there, there's a, a New Life Church up in, in, in Colorado Springs where it did happen, and this, this lady was in there that, that was a police officer, and I, I, I don't think this guy, I don't even know if he shot anybody. Are you familiar with that story? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he shot anybody because she, she was ready. But the, you know, it, here, here's the thing about what, when, a, when, a, uh, when something's coming our way, <laughs> it doesn't take very much for it to do a whole bunch of damage. You got to be ready to come back right away. <laughs> How many people do you need to let die before you shoot? You know, and I think we should realize that this is really how it is in our life. Somebody is dying if we're not being 
uh, proactive with our dependence on the word. It might not be obvious, but somebody's not getting what they could get if we were free. As long as we're bound, as long as we're oppressed by something, we're walking down the street and somebody's needing the anointing of God that will deliver them, and we're underneath a lie from the enemy, they're not getting anything. Right? Right? So what happens when we learn to walk in this, when we have the word of God that we're ready to pull out and utilize? Was that less nonchalant? Okay. <laughs> so I like this. Romans 10, 8, for salvation comes from trusting Christ, which is what we preach. What is that? That's word, isn't it? Is already within easy reach. In fact, is it as near as our own hearts and mouths? Here's the encouraging thing about this. We've already heard this, haven't we? We've already heard about salvation. We've already heard what Christ has done for us. We just got to use it. Got to begin saying it. Getting an attitude about it. No, that sounds like something other than what I already know. So you ain't going there. You know, I, I think you can do this as, you can be effective by simply saying, no, I'm not doing that. You might not even have to say a scripture. Just say, no. I recognize you. You're not from God. You're coming no further. But it requires that. You don't just let it sit around there and have its way. You get it. <laughs> All right. This is it. So, fast forward. Did that sound like fast forward? I don't know. Oh, that's, that's uh, yeah, like in those movies when the t- tires are squealing on gravel. That's always funny, isn't it? When they, anyway, um, that was supposed to be fast forward. Did you know that there's an end to all of this? I think sometimes we, we try to make too big of a deal of what we're going through right now. This is something that I, I think God wants us to see, that what's big to us is not big. And the smaller it gets in our side, and, and the more we, we, we begin to say what God says about stuff, yes. it'll make it smaller for us. Yes. Amen? Amen. Right. <laughs> because if we do fast forward, there's going to be those who overcome and those who do not. It's not just people that are religious that are going to overcome. It's not just saying, Lord, Lord. It's not even having working miracles that's going to make it happen. It's going to be using the word of God Against the enemy. Amen? What is that word? We sang about it today. And this is very powerful. And we, uh, you have to make it yours. This is what happens. Something happened in Christ that set me free. It's very simple, actually. You take what happened in you in Christ. And you begin to make it. Not, so, not just information. Not just bread that's offered to you and you say, I'm going to take that and run. No, it's mine. Now, what happened in Christ is my testimony. And you're not going to get it from me. I have an attitude about this that I'm not going to let you get away with stealing who I am. Right? The blood has been shed. It's already been done. Now, it's up to me. If I'm going to overcome, I'm going to... I'm going to have to use my weapons. What has Christ done for me? I'm going to have to say it. It's powerful. It's It's the word of God in your mouth. It's as near as in your mouth. What do we believe in God? It's got to occupy your mouth. Man, Mark says this. You know what? (laughs) There is no faith without an action, without a declaration. You know, we can say, well, I just wish I could believe. No, just start saying what you already know. Amen. It'll produce if you just say it. All right. It's not complicated. He's given us all the weapons. All right. Revelation 12, 11. And and I want to be the they. You know how they, there's so many, they say, and you know, there's all these they's, you know. Some they's I don't want to be. Right? But this day, I want to be. Can you say that with me? This day, I want to be. All right. That's kind of fun to say, isn't it? And they did what? Overcome. 
conquered him. By means of the blood of the lamb, that was something that's already been done, but not just enough. And by the utterance of their testimony, they had to say it. They had to say it. It wasn't going to happen without them saying it. Man, can you say that? It ain't going to happen unless I say it. But something big's going to happen when I do. (laughs) Right? For they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till they had to die for their witnessing. Now, that does not sound fun. But what is the war against the declaration of who we are in Christ? The flesh. This life. Oh, something's not going to happen for me in this life. So I have to succumb to the oppression to get it. That's what the enemy's always wanting to do. If you don't, if you don't su- succumb and give in to this like everybody else. Remember last week we were talking about high places and that's where we're going to take these thoughts down from. Uh, commonly assumed things. No, no, no. <laughs> right? No. We're not going to allow the enemy to tell us lies about how we're losing something in this life, in this flesh. And you know what he does when he does that? He steals from us the power to have dominance over that very same thing. And as soon as we let him tell us what's what, begin to guide our steps with that, we're his slave. And we have no option but to die under his rule. He says, you're going to die if you don't do what I say. No, I'm going to die if I do what you say. There needs to be that revelation that we've been given the word of God that will give us freedom over all these things. Amen? God wants us to be free. Can we just stand up and say a few things here together? I want us to practice this. <clears throat> because one of the biggest things, and you know, you can, we, can, we can look and we can put on a facade and whatever else, but one of the biggest things the enemy wants to put over us is guilt. And the diminishing of an identity of who we are in Christ based upon something that we've done right or wrong. Right is our pride, right? (laughs) And we're in the middle, or I guess last month was, somebody's wanting to make it a summer of pride. But but how how deceiving that is. What is that? That's I'm rising up above who I'm made to be, (laughs) Right? But in the middle of all this is a false sense of being okay because you're saying you're independent from what you've been told you're going to be. And in the middle of all that, and this is what's so sad, is each one of these people that think they're free by their declaration of their insanity is their hearts are still guilty. They're still oppressed by guilt and shame. And they never get away from that. Something I heard yesterday the 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 uh, the suicide rates haven't changed. Maybe gone up even. Why? Because you don't fix things by telling telling somebody they're okay. <laughs> you fix things by giving them something else to say. <laughs> Amen. Uh, let's just say these a couple times. But I I want to encourage you to make these your own. Because the enemy's going to come against us. He's got the opposite that he wants to say. That you are guilty. Something in your past. No. 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 By the blood of Jesus, I've been given a new past. Amen? Amen. But it has to be said. It has to be said because we're going to have these other thoughts going on. And they will put us under them if we allow them to. Amen? We have people in our life that will, will accuse us, will begin to say stuff. Oh, that's the kind of Christian you are. I've had this happen. And it beats you down, and you have to have something to say, or that weapon is going to hurt you. Right? Well, let's look at this one. And this is just some of these. Man, there's so many of these, but we have to put this in our mouth. Amen. Uh, as I walk in the Spirit as a child of God, I am free from all guilt and shame. Now, two parts to this that we have to say is I am walking. 
We need to get up in the morning and say, I am walking as a child of God. Because from the very big moment we open our eyes, there's going to be an option to feel like we're having to carry something from where we've been. And it's directing where we're going. And we have to say, no, I'm walking as a child of God. When I walk as a child of God, I'm free. And you begin to t say that stubbornly. You're not going to take that from me. I'm just telling you, this, this one little thing right here can turn your life around. Why? Because the weapons that are there already in your heart have made it into your mouth. And now the enemy has nothing to do but say, you're independent from me now, yeah. right? <laughs> Let's say that again. As I walk in the spirit as a child of God, I am free from all guilt and shame. Let's say this next one. My father cleanses me from all sin when I confess them to him. Oh, you know what? This will change your whole attitude towards God. Instead of being pulling away from him when you do something wrong. How many do something wrong? I do something wrong. But what it'll do is it'll allow you to understand that he likes you no less. <laughs> In your biggest transgression, and he wants you just to run to him. He wants you just to run to him. That is powerful in itself. That totally strips the enemy from saying you are guilty. <laughs> right? Let's say that again. My father cleanses me from all sin when I confess them to him. Amen. Man, let's use these. Let's make them part of our arsenal. If, if, if we're lacking anything, if we're in need of something, this isn't just money. This is a relationship, right? This is a job. This is a purpose. Enemy wants to steal our purpose. Amen? Let's say this together. As I am faithful to give from the supply I've received, I have way more than what I need. There needs to be a faithfulness on my part. I have to go back to God. It's not going to be something that he's going to say, oh, no, you're just, you're okay without doing anything. No, I'm walking in the spirit. I'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh as I do that, but I have weapons when I do, amen? And he says, when you're, this whole passage here in Philippians 4, 19, he says, this, is, this has been a pattern that you have opened up a window for me to bless you by being faithful with what I've already given you, Amen? So you can put a demand on that you now and you can say, my God shall supply all of my needs, right? Let's go to uh, Psalm 34. Because I seek the Lord first, I will not lack for any good thing. Amen? This is not just a concept that you can leave in the drawer. It's a weapon that will repel the one who's come to steal and kill and destroy. Amen. You have to use it. Say it one more time. Because I seek the Lord first, I will not lack for any good thing. Amen. Peace. We need peace, don't we? Oh, man. Sometimes we long for peace. Right? I've just got one here, but man, it's powerful. Because I keep my mind on and trust in the Lord, I am kept in perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Did you, do you notice each one of these has something that I'm choosing to do myself ahead of time? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But once you choose, once you take a step of faith towards God, now you have something in your mouth that you can say, because I'm doing this. Amen? It's not works. It's not the law. It's not something like, no, it's, it's me loving my God, using the weapons I've got. Amen? All right. Ability. I can do all things through Christ. Philippians 4.13, you don't have to be Tim Tebow to say this. Kind of helps if you are. Kind of helps if you have some big old muscles to go along with it. But it's not just for do, busting through a line. It's for being able to deal with people. How many would like to be able to deal with people? Right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Man, that needs to be something we use all the time. I can do this. I like this one in, in Luke 137. With God, all things are possible. There's a, there's a stipulation in there again. With God. I got to do this with God. Amen. But man, I, I know that I'm with him. All, Jesus said, I'll be with you into the ends of the earth. We're here together in this. Amen. All right. I got one more here. 
identity. Let's say this together. As I discover and know Christ, I am secure in who I am. Anybody, anybody know what this passage is? It says, but I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer me that's living. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Does this sound like me trying to come up with what kind of identity I want to have today? I'd like to be a dog today or something. No, Actually, actually, we, it, it will help us even in our occupation. In every part of our life, when we say, it's no longer what I want. It's what Christ wants in me. Amen? But there needs to be this, again, there's this pursuit of him. We find who we are when we find him. We have to lay down our life to find life. Amen? Amen. But when we do, this is who I am. And Satan, you're not taking that from me. I am a loved son of God. I am royalty. (laughs) He sees me as able. He loves me the way I am right now. He loves me so much the way I am that he's going to even make me better. (laughs) You might not like the way I am. Just wait. I'm getting better. Because God's working on me. Amen? (laughs) All right. Say this next one. I am a child of God with his nature and likeness. Amen? That's who I am. Satan, don't, you're not going to get that from me. I'm going to be stubborn about this. Yeah. And whenever anybody's coming to steal and to kill and destroy from me, praise God, I'm free from that. Amen? You know, I was just thinking about this. One more thing. Just let me... Uh, um, So in Revelation 12, there the, the, the passage that we like to, to, to read, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Who are they overcoming? It's talking about the one, the, the verse right before that, it's talking about the accuser of the brother. The one who came to accuse. What did he have? It, it didn't say the one who, who came and was volleying, you know, stuff at you or, or trying to break stuff up. It didn't even say the one that brought sickness and disease. It, it said... The one that brought accusations. Because as soon as you accept accusations, you accept the curse. But if you're unable to be moved by accusations, you become an overcomer. When you understand that the blood has been shed, the price has been paid, now I have a new heritage that only requires me to use my weapons. Now, you can accuse all you want. I'm still victorious. I'm still healed. I'm still an overcomer. I still have everything I need. Amen? And I have a future. You're not taking me down. I'm not afraid of death. That's one of the biggest things we need to get over is being afraid of death. You remove that power, and now you can be confident about everything else. Amen? Amen?